Hello everyone, this is the first time I've ever done a vlog and I have to say I, I feel a bit of an idiot doing it. Uh, a little bit embarrassed, but hopefully we'll get through it uh, unharmed. Firstly, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been following me both on Instagram and also subscribing to me on YouTube. Over 200 followers on YouTube now and over 2,000 on Instagram. Um, so thank you so much. I never really thought that anyone would be interested in, uh, in following me. I know those figures aren't particularly big for many YouTubers, but for me I feel quite flattered that people are interested in watching me fly and uh, looking at this wonderful aircraft behind me. Now, as the channels have become more popular, um, I've had a number of subscribers message me and ask me if I could do a walk around of the aircraft. As I've got nothing really exciting to do today and nowhere exciting to go, I thought that would be a really good opportunity. I store my aircraft with the wings folded. This has a number of advantages. It reduces the amount of space required for me to store my aircraft and this in turn has a positive effect on the cost of hangarage. It also means it's tucked safely away from other aircraft, reducing the risk of damage when others are maneuvering their aircraft around the hangar. On the back of the aircraft there is a removable tail wheel which means that I can move it around the hangar with relative ease. Transport struts are attached between the wing and the fuselage, which means that in this configuration it can be towed directly or on a trailer behind a vehicle. The process of unfolding the wings is relatively quick. This is done by removing the transport struts on both sides. unfolding the wings, which are then secured in place with a single bolt on each side. The flap runs are then both connected. The tail wheel removed and the turtle deck is fitted. The checklist ensures that nothing is missed. The construction of the Eurofox is relatively conventional with a fabric on metal space frame. It's very similar to the Cub or the Kit Fox in its design. It has four wing length flapper runs which combine the function of both flaps and aerolons. In common with the Cub and the Kit Fox, it is incredibly agile whilst remaining forgiving, stable and predictable. It's available in both tricycle and tail dragger configurations, but I chose to go with the tricycle configuration as I believe it's statistically safer. It allows operation at higher crosswinds, which is useful at our field, and also it gives better forward visibility on manoeuvring. When ordering, uh, you have control over every aspect of its design and you can choose the colour of every part of the aircraft, although Eurofox discarded black wings as this causes heat absorption that leads to issues with the fuel tanks which are housed in the wing structure. I chose the black and blue design for my aircraft with plain black decals. The freedom of design also includes the engine and interior. Eurofox offer a range of engines including the 912 Carburetta ULS, the 912 Injection IS and the Edge Performance Rotax engine. I believe they may also be offering the 915 IS but sadly this was not an option at the time I ordered mine. I chose the 912 IS as it is again in my opinion reliable, economical and relatively powerful. It also means that I don't need to think about choke mixture and carb heat and or icing. You can choose from a range of colours for the seats and cockpit. I chose the black and grey scheme to match the exterior. There is a reasonable baggage area which is located behind the pilot and passenger seats which has a weight limit of 18 kilograms. This space is reduced if you opt to go for the ballistic parachute system. The space bars allow baggage and items to be secured while still allowing for in-flight access. I often get asked about cabin space. I am 183 centimeters tall and weigh 84 kilograms. And as you can see, my legs are comfortably positioned and I still have around three to four inches of headroom. Eurofox will allow you to specify exactly how you would like your instru instrument panel laid out. This includes the choice of avionics, the format for the instrument panel in terms of the switch position. Obviously a few fundamental things you can't choose such as the position of the throttle and of the brake um, but otherwise anything else you can choose to have in whatever way that you like. 
For me, I am very, very keen on the Dynon products. I think they're absolutely superb. So I've gone for the 10 inch touchscreen Dynon system with an integrated uh, Dynon radio and also with their comm system, which is superb. It allows you to be able to operate your push to talk buttons from the control columns on both sides and only that side that is being pressed will broadcast so if your passenger happens to be talking to you at the time when the button is pressed then that will not be broadcast it'll only be the voice of the individual who's pressing the uh, the, the push to talk button so the design the Dynon system is quite so sophisticated in terms of what it's capable of um, obviously I would never use it to its full capacity but it is absolutely superb here you can see on the bottom of the screen I have chosen, once again this is fully customizable, I have chosen to have my um, engine uh, information on, on the lower, so that's the EFIS I think it's called, and then above that you can see uh, the artificial horizon, this gives you your, uh, your altitude, and on this side your airspeed, beneath that true airspeed, ground speed, it gives you your density altitude, your outside air temperature, I mean this is, it, it is just an incredible amount of information. On the top row here, that will that is uh, covered with X's at the moment, but if you have, like I do, the integrated transponder from Dynon, you can then uh, use press any part of the screen, any part of these enunciations which allow you then to customize or change information that's on those screens and I think you saw me operating the autopilot in the last video that I produced. Alongside that I've also asked to have the Guardian iPad holder and this has been uh, absolutely reliable except on one occasion where you saw I hadn't properly secured the iPad within the panel uh, and, and it uh, rather embarrassingly fell out on takeoff uh, but that has been incredibly reliable and I run Sky Demon which can talk quite easily uh, to the Dynon system and once again I think you saw in the last video that I produced me uh, giving you an example of that. On the right of the instrument panel are all the switches and along with that the fuse breakers there. So here we have, um, this is just for the 12 volt socket there, this is the servo for the autopilot, this is the transponder, the Dynon radio, integrated GPS, the Dynon avionics system, our landing light and the strobe. And once again you can also choo uh, choose what sort of lighting you want for your aircraft in terms of strobes and what have you. Now in terms of instruments here, and, uh, we have the brake, this is the brake handle here and you may have seen me pulling that gently just after I've, as I come to the end of my roll. Um, this is the throttle, it's not a Vonia throttle but I'm absolutely fine with that uh, and it has a locking and release mechanism which allows you to change the tension of, of uh, the throttle to, to, your, to your liking. And there are no brakes on the rudder pedals, obviously, that is all done with the handbrake on the right side here. There's quite a useful little cubby hole on the right hand side, or glove box as the Americans call it, and uh, that is quite deep and I can get most of what I need into, into that, that little storage unit. So I don't use it as often as the digital instruments, but there is a standard compass just here. And then at the wing base there are windows for you to allow you to observe fuel levels and you can see a little wiggle of the aircraft there shows that I've just under 20 litres on that wing and the same is true on this side as well there's another just there. Doors are locked using this mechanism here open and close and they're nice and secure and with little handles here and as you have heard some of my passengers say when we're flying the base of the window is clear which allows you an excellent view right down over the undercarriage and to the ground below. So on this side we have the fuel pumps. Um, there are two fuel pumps and these are both electrical fuel pumps. The being a fuel injector and engine we have lanes A and B rather than um, the magnetos. Above these are the engine fault lights so if any of the lanes develop an issue the fault light comes on. And as you may have heard with some of my startups, we don't do a mag check. What I tend to do is just look for those to make sure that those have extinguished and obviously to make sure that they turn on when I first turn the ignition on to ensure that there are no issues 
with the electrics or an electrical fault. This is an emergency starter switch, which is only used in cases of emergency, and I have a protocol and checklist for initiating that switch should I require it. Underneath the throttle brake controls are a few other little items. We have here the fuses for both the battery master and for the start power, and we also have a heating switch here. So this aircraft has cabin heating. Um, pull out to open the heater and it is absolutely ferocious, so you have to be quite judicious with its use. But in the winter, I'm really grateful to have it. The other is the oil flap, and you will have seen me operate that earlier. The oil flap closes a flap on the outside cowling, which allows the oil to heat up a little bit more quickly. And obviously you must remember to push that away before you take off to ensure that the oil doesn't get too hot. And once again, that's included in my checklists. It may not be apparent from this video, video footage, but you can see that there is a pitot tube just protruding from the starboard wing there. That pitot tube is a dynon pitot tube which allows me to use the angle of attack indicator and stall warning that is also part of the dynon system. Again, that is not a standard item and you can request that Eurofox include that, but if you are going to consider it, then make sure they know in advance because they have to have uh, a little bracket welded in the wing to ensure that that pitot tube can be mounted correctly. There are fuel taps which are mounted just behind the passenger and also the pilot. And then there is another fuel tap underneath the instrument panel and all of those must be open before you start. Some people choose to swap fuel tanks during flight. Um, you can set a reminder on the Sky Demon to remind you to do that. I tend to have both flaps open to it so that there's a continuous flow of fuel and I'm never concerned about deprivation. Obviously though, during the flight, you must make sure that you carefully monitor your fuel levels. The aircraft also has ADSB, so it can pick up traffic. So here with the Dynon, once again, I can choose to display many things. I can choose all instruments. I haven't really set this up to my liking, uh, but I need to do that at some stage. And also I have a map, map function here, which allows me to um, cross check the information from the Sky Demon. Obviously, if for any reason the Sky Demon should lose GPS connection, then I have this to rely on as well. So there's a secondary backup there. Here you can see a flight plan, which was programmed in for my flight to Shoreham, one of my previous videos. Once again, you can alter and manipulate this both within Dynon or alternatively from the Sky Demon and download a new plan.